Section 8 of Our Cats and All About Them. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. Our Cats and All About Them by Harrison Weir. Section 8. The Tortoiseshell Cat. I now come to the section of the short-haired domestic cat, a variety possessing sub-varieties. Whether these all came from the same origin is doubtful, although in breeding, many of the different colors will breed back to the striped or tabby color, and per contra, white whole-colored cats are often got from striped or spotted parents, and vice versa. Those that have had any experience of breeding domestic animals or birds know perfectly well how difficult it is to keep certain peculiarities gained by years of perseverance of breeding for such points of variation or what is termed excellence place a few fancy pigeons for instance in the country and let them match how they like and one would be quite surprised unless he were a naturalist to note the great changes that occur in a few years and the unmistakable signs of reversion towards their ancestral stock that of the rock pigeon but with the cat this is somewhat different as little or no attempts have been made as far as i know of until cat shows were instituted to improve any particular breed either in form or color nor has it even yet with the exception of the long-haired cats why this is so i am at a loss to understand but the fact remains good well-developed cats of certain colors fetch large prices, and are, if I may use the term, perpetual prize winners. I will take as an instance the tortoiseshell tom, he or male cat as one of the most scarce, and the red or yellow tabby she-cat as the next, and yet the possessor of either, with proper care and attention, I have little or no doubt, has it in his power to produce either variety ad libitum, it is now many years since I remember the first tortoiseshell tom cat, nor can I now at this distance of time quite call to mind whether or not it was not a tortoiseshell and white, and not a tortoiseshell pure and simple. It was exhibited in Piccadilly. If I remember rightly, I made a drawing of it, but as it is about forty years ago, of this I am not certain although I have been lately told that I did, and the price asked for the cat was one hundred guineas. This supposed scarcity was rudely put aside by the appearance, at the Crystal Palace show of 1871, of no less than one tortoiseshell he-cat, exhibited by Mr. Smith, and three tortoiseshell and white he-cats, but it will be observed, there was really but only one tortoiseshell he-cat, the others having white. On referring to the catalogues of the succeeding shows, no other pure tortoiseshell has been exhibited, and he ceased to appear after 1873. But tortoiseshell and white have been shown from 1871, varying in number from five to three until 1885. One of these, a tortoiseshell and white belonging to Mr. Hurry, gained no fewer than nine first prizes at the Crystal Palace, besides several firsts at other shows. This maintains my statement that a really good scarce variety of cats is a valuable investment. Mr. Hurry's cat, Toddy, keeping up his price of one hundred pounds till the end. As may have been gathered from the foregoing remarks, the points of the tortoiseshell he cat are black, red, and yellow in patches, but no white. The coloring should be in broad, well-defined blotches and solid in color, not mealy or tabby-like in the marking, but clear, sharp, and distinct, and the richer and deeper the colors, the better. When this is so, the animal presents a very handsome appearance. The eyes should be orange, the tail long and thick towards the base, the form slim, graceful, and elegant, and not too short on the leg, to which this breed has a tendency. Coming then to the actual tortoiseshell he, or male cat without white, I have never seen but one at the shows, and that was exhibited by Mr. Smith. It does not appear that Mr. Smith bred any from it, nor do I know whether he took any precautions to do so, but if not, 
I am still of the opinion that more might have been produced. In Castle's Natural History, it is stated that the tortoiseshell cat is quite common in Egypt and in the south of Europe. This I can readily believe, as I think that it comes from a different stock than the usual short-haired cat, the texture of the hair being different, the form of the tail also. I should much like to know whether in that country, where the variety is so common, there exists any number of tortoiseshell he-cats. In England, the he-kittens are almost invariably red tabby or red tabby and white. The red tabby she-cats are almost as scarce as tortoiseshell and white he-cats. Yet if red tabby she-cats can be produced, I am of opinion that tortoiseshell he-cats could also. I had one of the former, a great beauty, and hoped to perpetuate the breed, but it unfortunately fell a victim to wires set by poachers for game. Again returning to the tortoiseshell, I have noted that, in drawings made by the Japanese, the cats are always of this color. That being so, it leads one to suppose that in that country, tortoiseshell he-cats must be plentiful. Though the drawings are strong evidence, they are not absolute proof. I have asked several traveling friends questions as regards the Japanese cats, but in no case have I found them to have taken sufficient notice for their testimony to be anything else but worthless. I shall be very thankful for any information on this subject, for to myself, and doubtless also to many others, it is exceedingly interesting. Anyone wishing to breed rich brown tabbies, should use a tortoiseshell she-cat with a very brown and black-banded he-cat. They are not so good from the spotted tabby, often producing merely tortoiseshell tabbies instead of brown tabbies or true tortoiseshells. My remarks as to the coloring of the tortoiseshell he-cat are equally applicable to the she-cat, which should not have any white, of the tortoiseshell and white hereafter. To breed tortoiseshell he-cats, I should use males of a whole color, such as either white, black, or blue, and on no account any tabby, no matter the color. What is wanted is patches of color, not tiny streaks or spots, and I feel certain that, for those who persevere, there will be successful results. The Tortoise Shell and White Cat This is a more common mixture of coloring than the tortoise shell pure and simple without white, and seems to be widely spread over different parts of the world. It is the opinion of some that this color and the pure tortoise shell is the original domestic cat, and that the other varieties of marking and colors are but deviations produced by crossing with wild varieties. My brother, John Jenner Weir, FLS, FZS, holds somewhat to this opinion, but to me, it is rather difficult to arrive at this conclusion. In fact, I can scarcely realize the ground on which the theory is based. At the same time, I do not mean to ignore it entirely. And yet, if this be so, from what starting point was the original domestic cat derived, and by what means were the rich and varied markings obtained? I am fully aware that by selection, cats with large patches of color may be obtained. Still, there remain the peculiar markings of the tortoise shell. Nor is this by any means an uncommon color, not only in this country, but in many others, and there also appears to be a peculiar fixedness of this, especially in the female, but why it is not so in the male, I am at a loss to understand, the males almost invariably coming either red tabby or red tabby and white. One would suppose that black or white would be equally likely. But, as far as my observations take me, this is not so, though I have seen both pure white, yellow, red, and black in litters of kittens, but this might be different were the he-parent tortoise shell. Some years ago I was out with a shooting party, not far from Snowdon, in Wales, when turning past a large rock, I came on a sheltered nook, and there in a nest, made of dry grasses, laid six tortoise shell and white kittens, about eight to ten days old. I was much surprised at this, as I did not know of any house near. Therefore, these must have been the offspring of some cat, or cats, that were leading a roving or wild life, and yet it had no effect as to the deviation of the color. I left them there, and without observing the sex. 
I was afterwards sorry, as it was just possible, though scarcely probable, that one or more of the six, being all of the same color, might have proved to be a male. As I left the neighborhood a few days after, I saw no more of them, nor have I since heard of any being there. So conclude they, in some way, were destroyed. I have observed in the breed of tortoiseshell, or tortoiseshell in white, that the hair is of a coarser texture than the ordinary domestic cat, and that the tail is generally thicker, especially at the base, though some few are thin-tailed. Yet I prefer the thick and tapering form. Some are very much so, and of a good length. The legs are generally somewhat short. I do not ever remember seeing a really long-legged tortoiseshell, though when this is so, if not too long, it adds much to its grace of action. I give a drawing of what I consider to be a good tortoiseshell and white tom, or he-cat. It will be observed that there is more white on the chest, belly, and hind legs than is allowable in the black and white cat. This I deem necessary for artistic beauty, when the color is laid on in patches. Although it should be even, clear, and distinct in its outline, the larger space of white adds brilliancy to the red, yellow, and black coloring. The face is one of the parts which should have some uniformity of color, and yet not so, but a mere balancing of color. That is to say, that there should be a relief in black, with the yellow and red on each side, and so in the body and tail. The nose should be white, the eyes orange, and the whole coloring rich and varied without the least tabbiness, either brown or gray, or an approach to it, such being highly detrimental to its beauty. I have received a welcome letter from Mr. Herbert Young, of James Street, Harrogate, informing me of the existence of what is said to be a tortoiseshell tom or he-cat somewhere in Yorkshire, and the price is fifty guineas, but he, unfortunately, has forgotten the exact address. He also kindly favors me with the further information of a tortoiseshell and white he-cat. He describes it as splendid and extra good in color and it is at present in the vicinity of Harrow Gate. And still further, Mr. Herbert Young says, I am breeding from a dark-colored cat and two tortoiseshell females, and he hopes, by careful selection, to succeed in breeding the other color out. This, I deem, is by no means an unlikely thing to happen, and, by careful management, may not take very long to accomplish but much depends on the ancestry, or rather the pedigree, of both sides. I, for one, most heartily wish Mr. Herbert Young success, and it will be most gratifying should he arrive at the height of his expectations. Failing the producing of the desired color in the he-cats, by the legitimate method of tortoiseshell with tortoiseshell, I would advise the trial of some whole colors, such as solid black and white. This may prove a better way than the other, as we pigeon fanciers go an apparently roundabout way, often to obtain what we want to attain in color, and yet there is almost a certainty in the method. As regards the tortoiseshell cat, there is a distinct variety known to us cat fanciers as the tortoiseshell tabby. This must not be confounded with the true variety, as it consists only of a variegation in color of the yellow, the red, and the dark tabby and is more in lines than patches, or patches of lines or spots. These are by no means ugly, and a well-marked, richly colored specimen is really very handsome. They may also be intermixed with white, and should be marked the same as the true tortoise shell, but in competition with the real tortoise shell, they would stand no chance whatever, and ought, in my opinion, be disqualified as being wrong class, and be put in that for any other color. End of section 8